Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cudlow. I'm David Asman, in for Larry Cudlow today. Air operations resuming at Kabul airport as thousands attempt to flee Taliban control in Afghanistan. More than 600 people were seen in this photo cramming into an American plane headed for Qatar. And President Biden says he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan. Now, to talk about all these issues, joining me now is Indiana Congressman Jim Banks. He served in Afghanistan. Congressman, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Let me first start with what's happening on the ground right now, particularly something that Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, said uh, just a couple of hours ago. Let me roll tape and then get your reaction. Roll tape. The Taliban have informed us that they are prepared to provide the safe passage of civilians to the airport, and we intend to hold them to that commitment. We intend to hold them to that commitment. How do we intend to hold them to that commitment, Congressman? David, I, I have no idea. This is a humiliating disaster uh, ongoing in Afghanistan, and this administration and this press conference by Jake Sullivan, when President Biden addressed the American people briefly, Yesterday, they are still unable to give the American people and members of Congress like myself an answer about their plan to safely evacuate uh, thousands of Americans and our allies and partners in Afghanistan to get them out of this mess. This was avoidable. Uh, this was a predictable disaster, but it's humiliating at the same time to continue to see an administration abdicate their leadership and responsibility to get this right. Enough is enough. Come up with us with a plan and tell us what that plan is and execute it. Because so far, everything this administration has done in Afghanistan over the last 30 days, especially over the last 72 hours, have been a, an absolute uh, disaster. Now, Sullivan also claimed that every contingency was planned for uh, before these operations to move our troops out created this mess that we're seeing. Why didn't they get everyone out first? and then start talking about getting the troops out. Those 25, we now have 7,000 troops in harm's way. We had 2,500 uh, there for over a year without a service person being killed. Why, why didn't they reverse the order of what they're trying to do now? Uh, I, again, David, I can't, I can't answer that question. This administration has no clear reasoning for why they've made any of the decisions related to the pullout. Of Afghanistan. Remember, it was less than a month ago that they vacated in the middle of the night the, the Bagram airfield, which now would be the ideal location, an airstrip where we could lead the evacuation of, of, uh, of American civilians, of American troops, of all of the equipment that we've left behind that has now fallen into the hands of the Taliban, and to, to evacuate those interpreters and other Afghans who have been a part of our efforts over the last 20 years in Afghanistan. Why did we vacate a Bagram Air, the Bagram Airfield, a base that I, that I spent a great deal of time when I was deployed there in 2014 and 15? Why did we vacate that a month ago? Uh, now, now we're all banging our head against the wall wondering why that isn't available to, to, for us to use uh, today. There's so many, so many unanswered questions, uh, but at the end of the day, this administration has still not put together a plan to get Americans out of out of Afghanistan. This isn't a time for a debate about withdrawing and ending the longest war in American history. Uh, about 79 percent of the American people a month ago were on that side. And so is most of Congress, Republicans and Democrats. We all want to see it come to an end. But this is a humiliating disaster in how this administration has executed that plan that's going to go down in history is one of the greatest military failures in American history. Do we, do we know specifically how many Americans are now outside of, of the airport in Kabul? I, I hear figures from 1,000 to 11,000, nothing, nothing clear. The, those estimates, uh, again, range, uh, David. I, I, I earlier read an estimate of 5,000 American civilians. By the way, these Americans are not being prioritized. We, we've also learned that, that the priority has been given to Afghans to get them out of the country over uh, the lives of American citizens, which is deeply troubling to How, me and other lawmakers. This is important. Uh, too. How, what's the source for that, Congressman? Uh, th those are uh, 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 reports that I've, I've read in the American media and, okay. and uh, th that, that has been expressed to us by, by civilians on the ground and, and have been, that we've read about in the American media, too. I mean, we don't want to leave our interpreters and the other Afghans who are, who are fighting bravely at the side of Americans, but we do want to prioritize Americans. Now, the president's 
comments yesterday. He said the buck stops with him, and then he went right along and passed the buck on to the Afghan military and, in fact, to, to deals that Donald Trump made. So how can you do both? How can you say the buck stops with him and then pass the buck? Yeah, you, you, you can't. And, and this administration, they, they immediately pushed the panic button to blame Donald Trump. And you can't blame Donald Trump uh, for, this, for this mess. President Trump, over four years, uh, he, he developed a, uh, they, they negotiated with the Taliban. That is true. They did develop a, a pathway to leave Afghanistan. But one thing is absolutely true, that, that a point that I, that I want to make very loud and clear, David, and that is that Donald Trump, over that four years of, of debate about withdrawing for Afghanistan, never shut the door on leaving a light footprint of special operations, counterterrorism focused troops in Afghanistan to avoid a disaster like this. And I want to I drive that point home because Donald Trump, over those four years, he heard from lawmakers like myself, others on the Armed Services Committee, across the board, military leaders who talked about the importance of a light footprint, yes, in yeah. the failed nation building activities that we've, we've undergone f uh, without a good result for 20 years, but at the same time, keep just enough in place uh, to prevent the Taliban from taking over and something even worse when Al Qaeda or ISIS K, uh, the, 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 worst, uh, uh, the, the worst strain of ISIS, when they rise up and, and find a safe haven in Afghanistan once again to launch and, and uh, plan attacks against the United States of America, we're right back to where we started. Well, and it's, it's much worse than back to where we started because now they have billions and billions of dollars worth of armaments. And, and other materials that they can use. I mean, they're in far better shape than they were in 2001 when they were in control, right? Uh, that, 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 is, that is true. The Taliban now has 20 years worth of American uh, military equipment and equipment that has come from our NATO allies from all yeah. over the world that's been given to the Afghan army and the Afghan police. And, and David, when I was deployed in Afghanistan in 14 and 15, I was a foreign military sales officer that was engaged in these activities on the front and back end of acquiring American military equipment and then title transferring it over to the Afghans. I'm talking about large military, military uh, ground wheeled vehicles. We gave them everything from aircraft to ammunition and weapons, night vision goggles, um, uh, medical supplies and equipment. All of that has now fallen into the hands of the Taliban. And here's the question that I have for the Biden administration. What was the plan to either uh, 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 retain that equipment and get it out of the country so it didn't fall into the Taliban's hands or to eliminate it altogether? It appears that there wasn't a plan at all. And to yeah. your point, well, even if there the was Taliban a plan, now has even enough if there military wasn't a plan, equipment they could compete with almost any, uh, with, yeah. with many, with many uh, countries' militaries around the world. Right, right. I was going to say, even if there was a plan, it, it, it didn't work because they, they clearly have possession of that. Let's not forget the most important and the most dear to Americans uh, of what, what was lost, and that's the lives of so many Americans, 2,443 to 2,448. Uh, American U.S. troops uh, were, were killed during the course of these operations since 9-11. Uh, about 1,100 Allied troops as well, 66,000 Afghan troops for all the disdain thrown at them. Uh, a lot of them died as a result of the war and 48,000 civilians. The obvious question, was it worth it, uh, comes up. I, I happen to have a son is, uh, who was in Afghanistan for a year. I asked him that question before this happened. He said, look, my job was to get the bad guys and to save the innocent people. And we did a lot of that in Afghanistan. So we should not forget the, the, the people who were saved as a result of U.S. troops, not only in Afghanistan, but uh, around the world who could have doing terrorists. What would you tell uh, people who are wondering whether their work there was in vain? Well, we, we did our job. And, and for 20 years, we prevented another attack like 9-11 from occurring on American soil. And, and for that reason alone, any veteran who served in Afghanistan can know that their, their sacrifice and the sacrifices of their families and others was, was worth it. I don't know very many veterans at all, David, who, who don't support withdrawing uh, troops from Afghanistan and ending the longest war in American history. But all of us uh, find what's occurring at this moment to be shameful, that American leadership at the highest levels, our commander in chief and the, the, the leadership of the Pentagon has completely failed in this effort of executing a plan uh, to, uh, to pull our troops out of Afghanistan. That, that's, the, that's the part of it that I think will have a long-term 
uh, ramifications, not just for those who have served, yeah. but for the next generation of young men and women who are who we are asking to raise their right hand and take an oath of office to serve this country and to potentially ultimately give uh, pay the ultimate sacrifice in defense of this country when they see disasters like this occur at the hands of of, uh, of the leaders that are in place today. That that's a a long term ramification that I'm. Uh, that I'm very afraid uh, will haunt us for a long time to it come. It will. It will. Although it's important to point out that I, I don't know any person who served there, including yourself, I'm sure, uh, who's not proud of the work that was done there. Uh, there were a lot of people saved because of the actions of our troops. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you for being here, Congressman. Appreciate it.